Good evening and welcome to Good Friday Worship with St. Paul's Lutheran Church. If you do not already have your at-home worship resource, you can check your email or you can head over to stpaulsmilwaukee.com to find the resource there on the online faith resources page. We begin with A Blessing for What Abides by Jan Richardson. You will know this blessing by how it does not stay still, by the way it re refuses to rest in one place. You will recognize it by how it takes form, first one form, then another, now running down the face of the mother who watches the breaking of the child she had born, now in the stance of the woman who followed him here and who will not leave him bereft. Now it twists in anguish on the mouth of the friend whom he loved. Now it bears itself in the wound, the cry, the finishing and final breath. This blessing is not in any one of these alone. It is what binds them together. It is what dwells in the space between them, though it be torn and gaping. It is what abides in the tear the rending makes. Let us pray. Merciful God, your Son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with hymn 349. Ah, holy Jesus, we will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who had betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. 
So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers, together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given to me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish people arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Judeans that it was better to have one person die for the people. We continue with the hymn, Go to Dark Gethsemane, verses 1 and 2. continues in the courtyard of the high priest. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all the Judeans come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. 
They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. We continue with the hymn, Were You There? Number 353. We will sing verses 1 and 2. Pilate's headquarters. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Judeans replied, We're not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be 
fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Judeans. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you're a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Judeans again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to Jesus, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die because he claimed to be the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Judeans cried out, If you release this man, you're no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Judeans, Here is your king. And they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed him over to be crucified. We continue with number 351, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. We will sing verses 1 and 3.
gospel continues at the place of the skull. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Judeans said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, and the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. And so they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother, and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, and so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. In these weeks of pandemic, reflection on scripture in light of our global and communal realities, in weeks of social distancing and isolation, I have spent a lot of time thinking about the concept of the end. As I consider what it means that Jesus loved his own to the end, as we were reminded last night on Maundy Thursday, as stories roll and wash over us in the news, telling us of the ends so many are facing in these days of virus, I am struck by what feels like a precipice like the edge of the world or the top of the sky. I wonder what these endings mean, what this end we hear about tonight means. On the cross, we hear Jesus tell us that all is completed, that the end has come. And when I have considered in the past weeks of people dying alone, facing their own end, when I have considered the stories of what feels like the end of the world for people throughout our globe. God's Spirit has continually illuminated one thought for me, that our God goes to the end, the outermost edge, the places that we call hopeless, and God acts. No end is too deep or too scary or too final for God, because God has already been there. Tonight, in this familiar story, the ground of our faith, we are reminded that Jesus went all the way to the end, experienced the full range of human suffering, died alone on a cross. Because nowhere is too far or too hopeless for our God to go. Because Jesus would rather die with us than desert us. Thanks be to God.
We continue with hymn 347, Go to Dark Gethsemane. We will sing verses 3 and 4. Pray, dear siblings, for the Holy Church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, guide the Church, gather it throughout the world, help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for Paul and Elizabeth, our bishops, for pastors, lay leaders, all servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, deacons, ministers, and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church, and help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism, even in that, as that time extends until we meet again. Give all your children new birth. Keep us and them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our siblings who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. In these days apart, may we be reminded of our shared identity in you and in the body of Christ, knit together by your spirit. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith, and keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God on this Passover night. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. 
Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and in the lives of Christians. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and the oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to all those in authority, so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick. Comfort the dying. Give safety to travelers. Free those unjustly deprived of liberty. And deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Those things uh, prayed aloud in our own spaces, uh, within the silence of our hearts. Especially this night, we lift up those uh, continuing to work on the front lines in hospitals uh, as first responders, ambulance and paramedic crews. We give you thanks, O God, and ask for your blessing for all those workers deemed essential. And for all those uh, who continue to deal with the symptoms of the coronavirus, uh, and uh, that your spirit uh, would fill us and all who need it uh, with the breath of life. Gather us all into one, O oh Lord, and teach us to pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Garden Tomb Since it was the day of preparation, the Judeans did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Judeans, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. 
Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who at first had come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection, for by your cross, Joy has come into the world. May God be merciful and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon all earth, your saving health among the nations. We glory in your cross, O God, and we praise your holy resurrection, Lord Christ. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We continue with hymn number 350, They Crucified My Lord, verses 1 and 5. They crucified my Lord, and he never said a mumbling word. They crucified my Lord. No. 